Good morning, seventh grade. Welcome to my living room at home. We're all under quarantine. It's kind of like being snowed in, but we don't get the fun of the snow. Uh, anyways, I want you to meet some of my family members. Hi. This is my dog, Lexi. Lexi, um, say hi, Lexi. Yeah? No? Okay. This is Lexi, and um, she's a rescue. I've had her for a few years. Franklin, come here, Franklin. Franklin! No, Franklin maybe will show up later. He's my elf dog. Um, anyways, I hope you are all staying healthy, and thank you. A lot of you are turning in your assignments very diligently, and I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate your sending it on Google Docs to my Gmail. That's all on Gradelink. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about what we're going to begin to study next, and that would be the church during the Middle Ages. Um, and we think of the Christian church today. What is its function? What is its role in society? It teaches us religion, obviously. It teaches us morals. Um, there's a lot of help for people that in need, help for the disadvantaged. But in the Middle Ages, the church was quite a different place. And we're talking about approximately the years between 800 and 1300 AD. Most Europeans at that time were Christian because of Charlemagne um, that we just studied about in the last chapter. Um, only one branch of faith existed in Europe and it was headed by the Pope. It was the center of religious, social, and political activity. The church was extremely powerful. Um, it was arranged like a feudal system. Remember, it had a hierarchy. Popes, archbishops, bishops, priests, clergy, each with their own duties. And of course, the leader of the entire church at the very top was the Pope. Uh, the church was a bit corrupt at the time. Um, it taught that they, the church, would help people save their souls by helping they would, how can I say this? I'm sorry. They would, um, your salvation was in the hands of the church. Um, and at this time, they required the people to tithe or to give uh, a percentage of what they grew or money that they made to the church. And at the time, the church was the largest landowner in Europe. Can you imagine the clergy of the church were pretty much the only people that were literate in society. Therefore, they created documents, they kept all the records, they advised kings. Um, the common people tried to live according to the teachings of the church, of course, because they wanted their salvation. And their salvation came directly from the church, is what they were taught. Um, things such as living a moral life, performing good works, and giving part of their income to the church was what the church told them would get them to heaven. Uh, we now know that the Bible tells us that believing in Jesus Christ, accepting him as your savior, um, and through his grace, we are saved, not through anything we do or anything the church does, but through the grace of God is how we are, we are saved. But then people were illiterate and could not read the Bible for themselves. And so it was open to interpretation, laws, rules by humankind as opposed to relaying the word of God. The church was the center of all activity. It was the center of life. It even signaled the time to work when to eat, when to rest, when to attend mass. Uh, not only that, but it was one of the main important buildings in the society. It was a safe place or a place to um, seek refuge during times of war. They observed holidays, ceremonies, festivals. It served as a place for the town to gather. Um, and kind of like the bells at school when they signal to go to one class for another, but these bells controlled the entire lives of the people. 
Um, so tomorrow, you're going to read about this. You're going to read about the power of the church and also about the power struggle between the kings and the popes. So I hope you have a great rest of the day. Take some time out to have a little fun. All right. Love you and miss you guys. Bye.